Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. God bless you. Good to see that you are able to participate with us. I'm glad to be seen. Glad that we can participate in such a manner. We just thank God for the way he's moved in our lives and given us the ability to even share and participate in such a uh, medium at this time and such a time as this. Let's just bow our heads real quickly and implore God's blessings. Lord, we just thank you. We ask you to bless us as we are able to hear and participate and to partake of your word, Lord. Bless us as we listen and as we share, as we meditate and as we cogitate, Lord, on your word. Allow us, Lord, to be bountifully blessed, Lord, as we worship, as we praise through the hearing and the 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 concentration on your word, Lord, that, that your blessings continue to flow down on your people. We just thank you and we claim your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, these are interesting times. These are interesting times that we're in, and for our times that we're in, we are really uh, thankful that we're able to have an opportunity to come to you in such a unique manner. We are coming to you over uh, the airwaves of uh, YouTube, uh, hopefully in other manners uh, like this, as well as uh, partaking in the flesh, not having to worry about the social distance that we are worried about uh, in this particular time. So let us quickly turn to the book of John where we can find our scripture text for the morning. Our scripture text is in the book of John and it's very, very familiar. We're talking about the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And why don't we read verses 1 to 5 and then we will find our subject there. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. I have the American Standard Version. I, I think I will take my time and put it over to the King James Version. This technology is something else. Okay, we're going to be in the King James Version. We are in the book of John, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And verse 5, And the light that shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Well, I want to start by telling you a little bit about how it came to be meditating on this particular word. As usual, when I get up in the morning, I get up very, very early and I want to go downstairs and get a cup of coffee. And I did the same thing this morning as I did many, many other mornings. Often what I want to do is I want to uh, go down quietly and surreptitiously. I don't want to disturb anyone else that might be sleeping because it's very, very early in the morning. Sometimes I get up even in the middle of the night and go downstairs. And in my quest to keep from disturbing my household, I don't want to disturb my wife or my children, I don't want to make too much noise, I sometimes make a, a mistake that seems uh, rudimentary. It seems like I should not make this mistake. But in my quest to be quiet and to leave my household undisturbed, I leave the lights off. And I find time and time again that although I've lived in my home for over a decade, almost two, and I know where the doorknob is, I know where the stairway is, I know where all the furniture is. The fact that it is dark, the fact that I'm in darkness, the fact that 
uh, even though I'm in a familiar place, when the light is not there, when the darkness has taken over, it's still a challenge. It's still uh, easy to lose your bearings. It's still easy to um, be misdirected because even though you're in a familiar place, when the light has gone, you tend to lose your bearings. And I think uh, for many of the world today that uh, the light has gone a little bit. Uh, we look and feel as if we're losing our bearings, as if we're losing our direction. But I want to encourage you. I want to tell you to be encouraged. This is not anywhere close to the end. This is not something we should be looking at as the, the darkest hour. But we should be looking to the light. We should be looking to the light. And Jesus is the light, as we've just read. <clears throat> the scripture lets us know that in the beginning was the Word. Uh, I think what we have to be doing is actually getting back to our basics. The Bible talks about uh, getting the church to remember its first love. And so we've got to go back to our first love. We've got to go back to the basics. And the basics is that Jesus is the light. It is God who is in charge of this world. It is God who has placed us here. It is God who has made everything. The scripture says that the word was with God and that the word was God. And we have to be mindful. We have to remember that not only is that stated by the great apostle John, but it is stated also in the beginning of the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis. In which the Bible says that in the beginning, God, God created the heavens and the earth. And so the beginning, there was nothing but God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible is telling us. And so as we uh, have our quest to remember where it all began, we go back to the beginnings. And in the beginning, it was God. Well, God has put us here, and he's put us here for a purpose, and he has called us the church. And now the question becomes then, once uh, the leaders of this world, once the, the powers and the government, once the, those who have uh, control over how we do what we do in this society, once they start to tell us, that things have to stop, that things have to close, that things have to uh, be at a standstill, that people cannot do what they used to do. The question then becomes, are they imposing their will on the church? And they are not saints, they are not. Because we are the church. The church is us. We are the light of the world. Well, how did we become the light of the world? When God created the heaven and the earth, he created man in his image. So when the Bible says that the word was with God and the word was God, the word was with us as well. And we are with God as well. And so... Jesus, being the Word, being the Word incarnate, in other words, He was the flesh uh, incarnate, uh, uh, the manifestation of the Word. He told us that we, or ye are, the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So as the light, we must always shine. We have to always be a reflection of him who created us. We are the light saints. Praise the Lord. And so when they suggest that this is a dark time, when there's a suggestion made that this is a dark hour, 
when there's a suggestion made that this is the end, we know that this is the beginning. We know that the doors of the church are not closed. A physical door might be closed, but we are the church. And so the doors and the windows of the church, we, the people of God, are always open. What are we open to? We're open to hear the voice of God telling us to march on, to not be discouraged, to be encouraged, to move forward, to drive on, to demonstrate who he is and to, to, to act within our faith our most holy faith, knowing that he who keeps Israel, he who has not forsaken Israel, will never forsake his people. Ah, uh, the church is full of life. We are life. Jesus came that we would have life and much more life abundantly, much more abundantly. And if Jesus came to give us life, then we ought to live in life. Don't be discouraged. Live. Live. Engage in the life that God has given you. Don't be concerned by what you see or hear. We walk by faith in this life and not by sight. We are full of life and no death can hold us back. Christ died that we would overcome death. Rather, we are only dead to sin, and we are dead to what the people of this world would uh, place a value upon. But the value that they place upon the material things of this earth are misplaced. The real value is salvation in Christ Jesus. The real value is your relationship with Jesus. The real value is how you and your God walk in relationship. And so as we walk in relationship with God, we walk in life. The church is full of life. The church is open. The church is ready with open arms to take in those who are uh, not certain of their salvation. And the church is full of light. What did the scripture that we read just say? It says, darkness cannot comprehend it. In other words, the darkness of this world cannot comprehend, cannot overcome, cannot overshadow, cannot extinguish, cannot overtake the light, which is the light that shineth in the darkness, which is the true and living God. And that light is in you. That light is in me. That's the real light of salvation. So in the beginning when God said, let there be, he said, let there be light. And that light came for you. That light came for me. And that light is in you. That light is in me. Ye are the light of the world. Look to the light, saints. We've got to look to the light. You know, today I'm just asking you in this very, very short medium, and it's, it's not uh, professionally done, it's some, somewhat crude. It is uh, of the first time it, we're having to experience a message delivered like this. It's, uh, we're trying to be as professional as we can, and we're trying to be as godly as we can. Uh, there is difficulty when we're looking at a camera rather than your, your smiling, lovely faces. But I want you to be encouraged. I want you to understand that regardless of what the material world throws at you or me, regardless of the mandates that man or the government or anyone would put on you, that there is one greater, greater than me, greater than you, and greater than the powers that create the rules and the laws that force us to have to deliver a message like this. And that power and that light, the darkness cannot comprehend. So this is not the end. This is not the dark. Live in the light. Look to the light. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I want you to remind you that in addition to experiencing the message remotely, we can also give remotely. And I want you to, uh, if you have your cell phones, 
make sure that you access the uh, text messaging feature that the church has always been uh, engaging in for the past few years so that you can give. We want you to be able to log on to PayPal and give that way. I believe there may be a website allowing you to, to log on to Squarespace. That is the giving mechanism we've been using during our services. I want you to be able to not forget to give because that is part of worship as well. That's part of our praise. So we want you to give. If you cannot give through one of those electronic ways, please uh, drop your tithes and your offerings off to Pastor Skyers at the church at 475 Charles Street. You know, give her a, 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 a heads up, a text message or a phone call and let her know that you meet her there or you'll put it in through the mail slot. But we want you not to forget to gain your blessing through your giving as well. So God bless you. Um, I uh, hope, I pray, I expect that while we deliver the word in these types of methodologies, that we will also have an opportunity to deliver the word uh, in person as well. So I'm not suggesting that when we have one, we don't have the other. I'm suggesting that we use both, that we have the opportunity to both be in person, to, to touch your hands and to look you in your face, as well as to deliver a very timely word over these electronic mediums. This is a, a point in life whose time has come and God has pushed us forward and to the extent that we can do it, we will do that. We, we just thank God for the wisdom he's given us and the opportunity to give us to be uh, ready to deliver uh, a timely word for him this way. So we're gonna bow our heads once again as we close out a prayer. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for the way you've allowed uh, your people and your servants to experience your word. We thank you, Lord, for that we're still learning and that we're moving forward, Lord. But we're moving uh, through our holy faith, Lord. We're, we're moving through our desire to be part of your good news here on earth, Lord. We just ask that you continue to bless us. Bless us and sanctify us, Lord. Allow the blessings to come to your people, that we can be a beacon of light. Uh, through us to others, Lord, to allow your kingdom building on earth to continue. Remember those, Lord, who just even can't even hear this word, who can't even be around this, Lord, but we ask that you touch them, Lord. You've given us a charge to use a yellow card to pray for those who are not even in our midst, Lord, and we're doing that just now, Lord. So wherever they are, whatever they might be doing, Lord, we ask you to just touch them, to, uh, to, to prick their hearts, Lord, and allow them to know that the change that occurs in their life, that is occurring in their life, is through you. We just thank you, Lord, and as you bless them, Lord, give us the manifestation of the victory report, Lord. Allow us to see that our prayers are not in vain. We just thank you in all things, Lord. We ask you to heal this land, to heal your people, to heal your uh, servants, young, old, uh, rich, poor, uh, from one side of this country to the other, Lord, from one side of the globe to the other. We just thank you in all things, Lord. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, saints. See you again.